Hey there, and welcome back into the Pickle Jar. This is Jill, your host, and thank you so much for joining me for another episode, and especially because today is Rare Disease Day. So today I am celebrating me, I'm celebrating you, and I'm celebrating everyone that lives around the world, those 30 million people that live every day with a rare disease. So happy Rare Disease Day to, to us. And on today's episode, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of an update of what's going on in my world of living with that rare disease, Addison's disease. But before we get that, uh, get to that, I want to remind you that you can watch these episodes on YouTube at the Chronically Fit Canada YouTube channel. And I would really appreciate it while you're there if you could subscribe to the channel because I have a goal of reaching a thousand subscribers. And if you could do that for me, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And if you're ever interested in working with me with my online programs for my fitness and my nutrition that I put together, I would love for you to go to my website and just check them out. It's chronicallyfitcanada.com. I'll put that information, all that information in the show notes um, for you in case you're interested in it, as well as the link for the GoFundMe page for the the Pickle Jar podcast, because right now the Pickle Jar podcast is running on love and it's going to continue running on love, but it does take a financial cost and a lot of time. So if you're interested in contributing contributing any amount to the Pickle Jar podcast, I would greatly appreciate it. But all that information is going to be there for you in the show notes. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in my world. And this is the world of a lot of people living with a chronic illness. And my March is looking like it's going to be an absolutely crazy, crazy month of taking care of myself. So I had an appointment with my family doctor yesterday And to summarize, I've been having problems with my hands for the last about year and a half. It started on the right side. It's now progressing to the left side where my fingers, um, the fingers move fine. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see I'm I'm wiggling my fingers. They move fine when I choose to move them, but at rest, um, my fingers kind of drift away. The joints drift away. They're very hypermobile. They're very loosey goosey now. Um, I saw a specialist, a neuromuscular specialist in December to rule out anything catastrophic with my my brain and my spine and everything seemed okay there. I'm having some weird activity in my left shoulder that we're kind of exploring to see kind of what, what's going on with that. Um, I've had MRIs on my neck and on my brain. I've had x-rays, everything in the last year. So, but the problem is it's starting to go to my left side and I'm concerned that I'm gonna start, I'm 47 years old. I don't wanna lose function in my hands. And my family doctor is more concerned because I don't have the proprioception of where my fingers are all the time that I could possibly injure myself. So it's very challenging for me to pull something out of the oven now because of the weight on my wrist. Um, And I'm kind of scared that I'm going to use a knife and cut myself. Now, a girl with Addison's disease, any type of injury, we're going to complicate the Addison's disease as well. So obviously I have to be very proactive and um, be very aware of that. So I have some things in place that I'm going to do to work on that, to keep my body safe and strong. So first of all, we have therapy appointments coming up for the hand that I've just booked. Um, I'm looking into getting splints onto my fingers, which is going to help hold them into place. That's at the end of the month. Um, I actually have two MRIs booked. One is on that shoulder. The other one, we're doing another MRI on the brain to make sure everything still looks good there. I have an endocrinologist appointment as well in March. So I have a very, very busy March of taking care of myself with a chronic illness. And I'm trying to get into my chiropractor as well. So, so what does that mean? That means looking back last May, I had a very similar month and that put me into a crisis. So I'm going to have to plan and prepare ahead and really listen to my body. But in the meantime, I also want to start in January. I started exercising more. I went back to teaching my virtual classes, which I absolutely love. And I can feel It's been about eight weeks. I can feel that strength coming back in my body. I'd paused with them for a few months because I was having some health issues and I could really see the decline in it. So I'm very, very excited that in the last eight weeks, I can feel the difference. I can feel that strength. I can feel my posture. I can feel my chest opening up. I know I'm breathing deeper. And I know when I do those things, when I progress and make my body stronger, it's taking stress off internally from my body. I'm healthier. I'm stronger. I can fight Addison's disease better. And that's kind of my mission with my fitness and my nutrition is I know I need to push. I need to push just that tiny, tiny little bit to encourage my body to stay strong because I don't want to lose ground because I know if I lose ground, I'm going to lose it fast. I'm going to get discouraged and I'm going to have more problems 
um, than what I want. And it could put my, really, it could be life threatening for me. So, um, so I have some new goals moving forward, considering, you know, my hands and just everything. It just kind of put everything back into perspective, how important it is for me to take that next step in my wellness. I've been, you know, I've had broken feet. I have broken toes right now. And I bought a spinning bike. So I've been trying to spin a little bit every day, just nice and gently with my Addison's disease. I take everything nice and gently and in short intervals. So I'm trying to spin every day because that movement makes me feel better. But one of my principles with my business with Chronically Fit Canada, um, my three, my three principles are to empower, inspire, and to comfort. And that empower is your physical body. Inspire is your nutrition and comfort is the importance of taking care of your mental well being. So to empower my body, that's the strength training. I know I need to build that strength back. Um, super, super important to me. And I'm going to take it in slow, slow little intervals so I can gradually increase because I know what's going to happen. I've done it. I don't know how many times I start, you know, exercise is stress on the body. It's positive stress, but it takes away my cortisol. I have to repair. I have to recover. Um, I'm going to be run over by that low cortisol freight train and it's going to back up over me a lot <laughs> and it's going to continuously run me over and I know for myself exactly what happens and how I feel and that's one of the biggest fears I have on taking on this challenge but I know it's so important and I know I need to do it because I want quality of life for as long as I can have it and so what happens to me when that 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 freight train runs me over um, and flattens me like flat Stanley <laughs> I usually get really teary-eyed um, that's usually when I cry the most about my dad. <laughs> my dad, if you don't know, died of an adrenal crisis, uh, when he was 56. So like 18 years ago, uh, about six years before I was diagnosed, he had primary Addison's disease. I really miss him. And in those moments, and I think I miss him so much because he was so silent about his Addison's disease that I know he lived with this and it just breaks my heart that he felt like that. And we weren't there for him. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this podcast and Team Addison's Canada and just sharing my journey because I know he hurt. I know he hurt so badly because I feel that hurt now. And I just want to share that so that we can have comfort in knowing that we're not alone because I know he was all alone for all those years. He was diagnosed before I was even born. So he was diagnosed at like 22 or something like that so he lived with it for like over 30 years in silence so that's what I'm doing I'm going to increase my weights gently I'm going to try my best to set a routine I know I need a routine with this I need to do it you know probably at the same time every day start with similar exercises and slowly progress and figure out how to adjust my steroids to match the new activity in my life because we know there's so many factors that we have to consider I might think I have the exercise thing filled out, but there might be emotional stress. There might, I might have a cold I'm fighting. The weather changes, all kinds of things affect us. And it's so hard to gauge that medication, that steroid dose. So I need to be consciously aware and I need to take those baby steps. So, um, and then I'm going to listen to Leslie James episode that we just released in the last few days. Cause she talks about lantern bearers. Um, and I just love these. So I'm going to be pulling in my lantern bearers. And now these are the people in your life. She's created six of them um, in terms of grief, grief and with chronic illness. These are the people that are in your life that are going to light your way. And I'm going to pull in my light and lantern bearers to help me on this journey because I'm going to need them. And there are people out there that want to help us. And taking a step back, think about, you know, these lantern bearers in your life the people that can help guide you and support you. It also does something for them as well. These people that help and reach out and love and support us, it makes them, it validates them as a person. It's just who they are and they want to support people. They want to support the people that they love. So um, so remind ourselves of that we're not being a burden. We, we just want to put it out there and the people that are going to guide us are going to come to us and give us that love and support. So I'm going to rely on those lantern bearers and she has her lantern bearers are your advocate, your assistants, um, your specialist, you know, your bookkeepers, um, your people who support you emotionally and spiritually. Okay. So 
think about who those people are and reach out to them, just connect with them and let them guide you, let them be your lantern bearers. So, so that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be ramping up. I want to build strength. I want to build up my upper body. I want to build strength in my whole body. I know people keep telling me, you got to remember you're almost 50. Yes, I do remember I am also 50, almost 50 and changes are going to be taking place in my body. Um, and, you know, I know my standards are high, but I know it's also good to have high standards because I'm, I'm going to work hard to meet them because of the body. Nobody knows, but these people living with rare disease, we know how amazing these bodies are and how hard they fight and they deserve to be celebrated. And I'm going to celebrate my body by feeding it the best that I can and exercising and building that strength back up because because I just, I got to do it. It's my personal responsibility. So I want to share with you a little memory, um, something, something that I want you guys to take away today. If you don't have a song, if you don't have a theme song, I want you to go out today and I want you to get, get yourself a theme song of music, add it to your playlist. And I want it to be your song that really speaks to you. That song that on a good day, it makes it better. And on a bad day, it makes that day just not as bad. It takes that edge off for you and reminds you who you are. And I wanted to share with you one of my theme songs. I do have I do have a few that kind of um, perk me up on bad days. And I know if I'm having a really bad day when that, that song just doesn't do anything for me. So um, that's a sign that I need medication right there, that I need more steroids. But one of my songs is St. Elmo's Fire. Um, and the reason why that's one of my one of my favorite songs, one of my theme songs is it reminds me of my dad. And it reminds me of my dad because if you remember Rick Hansen, who, you know, traveled around the world in a wheelchair um, back in, oh boy, that was, oh, I should have looked up the year. It was back, I think I was in grade six. So it was probably like 1986, sometime like that. But that that was his theme song, The Man in Motion. And um, I have a very strong memory of my dad. And we went, we were lucky enough in the small town that I lived in, in Southern Ontario, Rick Hansen made a stop one night. And it was a cold, rainy night. And I can still remember how cold that, that night was. And when we got home that night, we watched the evening news. And, okay, you guys are going to make me cry again because this is the only place that I cry. <laughs> um, I watched the evening news and I can still remember sitting on the floor in front of the TV watching the news. We were going to watch. We were there. Let's watch what the news says about Rick Hansen com coming to our little town. And they showed a clip. And in that clip, it was Rick coming up and, and my dad reaching out from the crowd and shaking his hand. And I remember thinking, oh my God, that's my dad, my dad. My dad's on TV shaking Rick Hansen's hand. And I can still see him reaching out. And the funny thing is, I can still see him reaching out of the crowd, shaking Rick's hand. And he's got that dark Addison's tan. It's like clear as day in my head and a few years ago this song randomly came on the radio and and made me cry because it brought me back to that moment and it gave me my dad back and I actually sent um Mr. Hansen an email and thanked him for you know obviously his inspiration and you know as a kid I didn't realize how lucky I was to have that moment in time in history to have him come from our, our town but you know obviously when we reflect on when we get older we realize how amazing those things are and I thanked him for giving him that moment in my childhood but I more thanked him for giving me that moment with my dad because every time I hear that song I hear my dad or I see my dad I see him reaching from the crowd um excuse me as I wipe my tears <laughs> so this has definitely become one of my theme songs and if you listen to the song, I wrote out some some of the quotes from the song, some of the lyrics. Um, it's very, very inspiring for people living with a rare illness. And it just reminds me of the fight that I have. And some of the lyrics that I really love are, play the game, you know you can't quit until it's won, soldier on, only you can do what must be done. And I think that's great. We, you know, we got a game, we got put in a game <laughs> that we didn't want to play, but we're going to play it and we're going to play it hard. We're going to learn the rules and we're going to win that game. And you can only win if you play by the rules. And that's what we do by coming together and sharing and advocating with each other. And we can't quit. We can't quit. It's so hard. It's so easy some days to want to quit. And we all deserve to have those days. 
but we needed we need to be reminded that we can move forward we can win and then the next line after that is soldier on just soldier on we are all warriors we are all strong and we can all move forward just step by step and then it's only you can be do what must be done you know in some ways you are a lot like me you're just a prisoner and you are trying to break free and that's what we often feel like with a rare disease we feel like prisoners in our own body and i think in some ways we are and um and we are trying and we are trying to break free and and you guys are a lot like me and that's one thing i love about this podcast that's one thing i love about us sharing is how many times i hear from you guys saying you get it you validate me we validate each other and that to me brings us comfort and it helps us move forward we are each other's lantern bearers we are going to light that way for each other and i'm so so happy that you are one of my lights so please go to the youtube channel for me please subscribe please check out my website i would love to work with you and i hope you tune in for more of these episodes as i take on this new journey and i share with you all the ups and downs of low cortisol and building that strength back you can actually go to my Facebook page. I have a Facebook page called The Salty Pickle. I'll put that in the links as well, where there's more pictures and different things like that that I'm going to document about the journey as well. So thank you again, my pickles. And until next time, please be well.